Inflation is the worst tax of all. Someday you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. The yep. government will give you your money. I said this all the time. We own oil wells. We don't oil oil companies. We don't own yeah. stocks. So again, when Biden cut the XL pipeline off, oil went from 30 to 130. Holy mackerel, we got, we're making so much money today. The dangerous thing is people are being wiped out. That's what scares me. Any intervention they have in a free market economy, it's always going to make things worse for yeah. the poor and middle class, yeah. whether it's through the insidious, uh, you know, invisible tax of inflation or whether it's just, you know, propping up uh, assets that are creating, uh, you know, these bubbles where people get completely wiped out and misallocation of resources and malinvestment. I mean, th we've got to understand that central planning or Marxism, this is a very, very slippery slope. This oh, is God. the road to ruin. Or as Jim Rogers says, you know, this is the quick path to the poorhouse. Uh, we need to understand that free market capitalism is not perfect. But it's the best system we have to raise this uh, standard of living for the poor and middle class. I have directed the Secretary of the Treasury to take the action necessary to defend the dollar against the speculators. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets, except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. Your dollar will be worth just as much tomorrow as it is today. I talk about the three types of fakes there are in this world. Number one is fake money, number two is fake teachers, and number three are fake assets. It all sticks, starts with fake money. So in 1971, the US dollar became fake. So why Nixon in 1971 saying, the dollars coming off the gold standard was supposed to be temporary is so important is the U.S. dollar became fake money. It's exactly what my rich dad was saying to me. And we're going so Marxist, that's why I'm, so many kids, oh, if I go to college, I'll be fine. That's what you got taught Marxism. You know, they, they talk about, you know, tax the rich and all these other things they teach, but they think that's frightening today is what Klaus Schwab is saying. Someday you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. That's the, ab the abolition of private property, which yeah. is Marx. The crazy thing is they're trying to use inflation as a reason to tax the rich. And it's just completely perverse because the way you solve consumer price inflation by producing more stuff. And uh, you know, if you're taxing all the people that are producing, are we gonna have less stuff in the future? We're we gonna have more stuff. Capitalism is run by a central banking system. The government is, you know, communism is centralized government, capitalism is centralized banking. And the more you step back, you look at the big picture, the ultra-rich control the central banks. For example, the Rothschild Corporation, I, let's say there's 50 central banks, the Rothschilds own about 48 of them. And so uh, you and I don't have a prayer because mm -hmm. money makes the world go round and the economy runs on money, like it or not. Our financial system, or money, is designed to make the rich richer, but keep the poor middle class poorer. And that's why our schools don't teach us about money, because the school system works for the central banks also. My whole fascination is why are some people rich and why are some people poor? But in 2022, the gap between rich and poor is now accelerating. It's getting wider than the Grand Canyon, but a lot of the times, the people that are getting poor is simply because they had poor teachers. Their parents are poor or they come from a poor background or like in my case, they're all school teachers who think even a PhD, that's all you need. And unfortunately too, if they don't see the world the way it really is, they assume the solutions that are presented to them by the central planners and the politicians, they just take that at face value. Is that, the, oh, well, the solution for bridging the inequality gap, if you will, is just to tax the rich. We'll just take everything from the rich and we'll just let the politicians take what they want and then just give the table scraps to the poor and somehow that will reduce the, the wealth gap. But as Margaret Thatcher said, 
uh, that'll just make everyone equally poor. You know, what we want to do is we want to make the poor and middle class, we want to make them richer. And for whatever reason, well, it's because those people don't have that financial education. They assume that the way that you, you know, again, bridge that gap is, is by taking from one group. Is so somehow there's like this fixed pie and we have to realize that in free market capitalism, and that brings up the quality of life for the, the people at the bottom. For thousands of years, we've done what we're doing today. We spend too much money, we print money, we debase our currency. And so the trouble with what's happening to our money is in 1971, when Nixon took us off the gold standard, the dollar became debt. People don't know that. And they could print as much as they wanted. So the value of the dollar goes down. So if you're at rich dad, poor dad, I said savers are losers. Because why would you save it when the Fed can print it? The trouble is, historically, for thousands of years, anybody who's done this collapses. So the Roman Empire collapsed, the Chinese government collapsed, and we're doing the same thing. We just, we just don't live long enough to know it. So we're pretty close right now. Um, we just can't keep printing money and giving people money for free and, and think that it'll survive. And the trouble is it's now a global problem. You know, we have the central banks of like European, J Japanese, Chinese, everybody's central banks today, and we're printing money. The game these financial planners play is they only show you charts going back to 1981. And this is when Paul Volcker raised rates. So since then, we've been in a down cycle in interest rates. And, and you, sure, you can say the stock market always goes up right if interest rates are always going down. But what happens when interest rates start going back up? And that usually the cycle is about 30, 40 years. So if you look at charts of the stock market going back to 1927 to 1980 or 81 adjusted for inflation, it was pretty much flat. But see, they don't tell you that. The rich started to get richer because the stock market was going up and the economy was booming because there was all this fake money flooding the system. Then there was this crash here in 1987. So in 1987, after they crashed, they said, oh my God, how do we prevent it from crashing again? So they started creating fake assets. But something even worse happening is the last crash was, let's say 2008, when the repo market reversed and all this stuff. And most of these financial planners and real estate brokers, all they know is a rising market. All, you know, since 2008, we've been nothing and happy days are here again because they kept dropping interest rates Real estate went up, uh, stock market went up, bond markets went up. Yeah, you know, and my objective might help some people kind of uh, think about real estate or assets in a different way. The, the first goal that I had when I retired is just to look at my monthly expenses and say, how can I get my money to cover those expenses, yeah. you see? And so how can I get my cash flow to right. cover these things? So then I know that I'm never drawing my savings down. And I think it sounds easy and it sounds commonsensical, but very few people just kind of connect those dots and realize that if they can create enough cash flow with their, with their portfolio to cover their monthly expenses, that is when you're financially free.